it's apparent, obviously, that you can't travel backwards in time. Even if you have a pretty isolated system, it would be difficult to rearrange all the information contained within it to return it to a prior state in time, much like trying to fit the pieces of a broken teacup back together. But what you might not be aware of is that space and time share a similar feature in this regard. That is, just as you can't return to a prior location in time, neither can you do so in space. This is Dialect with Why You Can't Travel Backwards in Space. The concept here is actually pretty simple. Consider that you're traveling between two locations, say the office and your house. At the start of the day, you leave your house and head to the office. At the end of the day, you leave the office and head back to the house. Now, you've returned to the same location in space that you were at at the beginning of the day, right? Well, that's not exactly the case. Because while you were at work during the day, the Earth rotated. This means that going back to the same location in space would require traveling all the way back to the point in space where your house was located when you first left. Okay, but maybe you think there's a way around this. You can just wait 24 hours until the Earth makes a complete rotation on its axis, thereby returning your house to its same location. But then you need to consider that during those 24 hours, the Earth was hurtling through space at 19 miles a second in its orbit around the Sun. Thus, you are now approximately 1.6 million miles away from the position in space where your house was located when you first left. Of course, it gets even more complicated because the solar system itself is traveling at 143 miles a second through the Milky Way galaxy. Thus, if you waited about 24 hours to return to your house, you would be at least approximately 12.3 million miles from your initial location in space. And that's not even considering the fact that the Milky Way galaxy is moving through the Virgo cluster, and that the Virgo cluster is moving through the Laniakea supercluster, and, well, you get the picture. So, what does this all mean? Well, ultimately, we don't know the extent of the universe, or how fast we are moving through it. The consequence of this restriction on our knowledge is that it is impossible for us to define a prior location in space in any absolute or global sense. You can't say, I'm going to return to the location in space where I was a minute ago, if you don't know in which direction or how fast you are traveling through space. And if you can't establish a prior location in space, then you can't establish a backwards direction in space, since the notion of backwards inherently refers to one's prior location in time. Hence, these considerations demonstrate that to travel backwards in space is impossible. Of course, you might imagine having total and perfect knowledge of the universe. Then perhaps you could calculate how everything is moving in relation to a fixed boundary, and from there identify points of global space. But this requires a number of assumptions about the universe that for reasons not worth getting into here, we aren't justified in making. The only way to truly travel backwards in space, then, would be to rearrange all the objects you are moving relative to into a position that is in perfect relation to where they were when you were first at your prior location. That is, you would have to travel backwards in time. Like putting the shattered teacup back together, traveling backwards in space requires you rearranging all the information in the system back to an earlier state. This is fascinating because it hints at an enigmatic relationship between space and time. Just as time is perceived to flow, so too is space always flowing, carrying us forward with it whether we like it or not. The fact that an observer can only travel in a forwards direction also means that there is as much of an arrow to space as there is to time. We can see this a little more deeply through an analogy with entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. If you know a little about entropy, you know that systems don't spontaneously reoccur to improbable states, a fact that physicists often hypothesize is responsible for giving time its forward direction. Well, there's a sort of entropy that governs spatial systems too. Consider an object enclosed in a fixed boundary. As that boundary grows larger and larger, it becomes less and less likely that the object will ever be able to traverse a location where it was at earlier. Thus, the chance of seeing a prior spatial configuration repeat itself decreases with increasing system size. Of course, 
None of this is to say that you can't define a backwards direction in space locally. Using the relative distances of objects in your immediate vicinity, like say your office and your house, you can establish a fixed boundary for your system from which back and forth space travel is readily possible. But it's interesting to think that, ultimately, this is really only an approximation. You may think that, after work, you have the freedom to return to the same place you were at at the beginning of the day, but this is only an illusion. As they say, you could never truly go home again. This is Dialect. Thanks for watching. <laughs>